Welcome back, guys. Uh, today we're here working on Nick's Roadrunner again. Say hi, Nick. What's up? Uh, we're doing the floor pan video. This is the second part of it. Um, so well, that'll be hopefully coming up soon along with this. Um, I also want kind of just want to talk about the main vision we have with this car. Uh, obviously, it's a Roadrunner. Nick's cool, so he wants the daily drive. I kind of like how I do with the Chevelle. Um, that being said, there's still some things we got to do. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm getting ready to go off to IBOLIC, which stands for Infantry Officer Basic Leadership Course. I'll be going on active duty status. Um, so unfortunately, I won't be returning uh, probably for a while. So something we've always kind of wanted to do before I head off is cruise our two cars together, the Chevelle and the Roadrunner. Um, I think that'd be really cool just to kind of do a little send off. Um, so along the way, uh, hopefully we'll cover up some issues, recover some issues that we've got going on. Uh, we got the coolant to do. Uh, there's the rear pumpkin that we have to mess with, um, fuel system, and finishing the floor pan, and just a little uh, bit of things here and there that we'll kind of go over that will hopefully be useful for somebody watching um, that they can learn from as well. <laughs> This side's pretty much done. Um, just a, a couple more little things I gotta do to clean it up and finish it up. Oh, we gotta drill for seats and weld in a plate here for your seat, but I'll show you on that side. Um, but uh, yeah, on this side we still have to weld this plate back in. There's a there's a thick plate, it's four spot welds, and that's the, uh, the actual like welding nut for your seat belt. So uh, we've already cut out a little bit of that side just to be able to get to the rear pan. The rear pans are done, so I can't show you much of that. Um, but uh, when you when you start on one of these cars, you're gonna have these um, these wiring covers. There's two of them through there. Um, no, there's there's no real good way to remove them and put them back in so whenever you start four pins if you're doing a full pin all the way to the rocker you're going to have to replace those so you might as well just snap that out um, and get the little welded, welded pieces because they're actually welded to the top side of the four pin now the four pin your four pin wraps up and there are spot welds on the rocker back here right and they'll kind of be popped around you can see on this side where we've, we've drilled for them i haven't finished those yet but um you're gonna have to pop those or kind of cut reliefs and then peel around them or um, the really the best way to break the spot welds is if you have like an air chisel do that but we don't have an air compressor here right now so i uh, can't do that anymore that's what i did for this side um you'll need to break those and then there's spot welds on the top all the way down through here so you're gonna have to break all of those and then these sometimes those are kind of welded through where that wiring cover connects they're actually welded through the top of the four pin um, and then you get right here and this is this is where you wouldn't think people would make this mistake but people have and you can actually see the previous whoever worked on this last or whoever saw this last started to mark out where they were gonna cut to replace this section because I'm guessing this wasn't as bad but it was still you know starting and you can see right here where they cross there are spot welds right through here what that is that is your transmission cross member and you wouldn't think people would do this but I, I saw on an AMD video of a CUDA that someone actually did start cutting the top of the car without looking under it and figuring out where that cross member is and they cut through it so you do not want to do that. Um, what we're going to do, and there's there's a million ways to go about this, but what we're going to do is cut this section out and stop right before the cross member, and then use screwdriver or pry bar if, if you have an air chisel. That's the best way to do it. To pop these welds and get this panel free, we're going to have a relief cut, and we're going to cut all the way through here. And you don't want to cut too high because if you're doing if you're doing a two pan replacement instead of doing the whole tunnel like we're doing here um, you got too high obviously you're gonna have to you know come up with some sort of a strip to fill it or, or you're, you're in trouble if you do that so cut low and then once you get enough of this out to test fit your new floor pin mark where that is 
cut a little below that and, and just don't don't cut too high because if you end up cutting too high you won't, you won't be able to match everything up so you got your cross member here um, this car has been four speed swapped and it's been done the ugliest way possible so we're gonna hack all of that out and weld a, a hump in like it should be if it were a four speed car because this started as an auto car and then up here you have underneath that there's a plate that goes across and there are spot welds through there and these are probably just kind of fall apart whenever we get that far up but um, you want to be careful not to mess that plate up too much because you're going to need to weld to it as you can see on on this side um, and then up here where it meets the firewall there are welds like I guess you call them pinch welds or it's it's two pieces of metal that go down under there and they're and they're pinched together and one's like wrapped up under it kind of like a like a J channel and um, you're gonna have to break those without twisting that too much because if you get that all all wavy and twisted up your new pan is gonna be very difficult to fit so try to preserve that as much as possible um, what I'm gonna do is actually cut all the metal right there and use a little Dremel and just make little notches in it and kind of peel around those spot welds and break them so we don't actually twist that that flange around at all um, and then again be careful how high you cut here because if you cut too high like higher than your replacement pan goes you're you're gonna have to find a way to fill it or do something so that seam runs all the way you can see underneath all that all right so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out right here you said yeah cool all right, guys. I'll film it. Yeah. You do want to remove the dimmer switch there. Okay. Say that now. You you want to obviously you want to remove the dimmer switch. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So this is really the sort of like the nasty way to do this. Um, ideally, you, you use an air chisel like with a fine point and get it under here. But um, again, we don't have an air compressor anymore, so. Uh, do this somewhat aggressively with a screwdriver and a hammer. Um, we'll, just for this section, we'll, we'll do some other stuff here in a minute. I think this section is a little too. Oh, that works back here. Um, these spot welds in in the areas where they're rusty, that one's a pretty good one. But a lot of times they'll just pop. The metal will come off around them like so. And that's the section we just pulled out. And uh, also, this metal likes to peel very easily, which kind of helps you break it out in chunks. Um, it does take time to do it like that. It's a lot easier to just run an air chisel up under it and just blah, blah, and get the whole thing free. But um, we don't have that, so we're having to do this the uh, the nastiest way possible. But um, that's that's got to where it's it's a little hard. So we're going to go ahead and cut this section out and, and loosen that up a little. We'll probably cut a relief up there. A couple of things we didn't talk about earlier. Um, supporting the car. Uh, you, these are unibody cars. You want them, you want them supported for all this. Um, what I've what I've learned is you want to start supporting them by their their suspension points. So um, essentially, put your jack stands on as as close to the, the lower ball joints on the control arms as you can. Let it rest, and then put your others on the axle. Keep the axle under it unless you're. I mean, if you're doing a rotisserie restoration, this isn't the video for you. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Once you have once you have it settled like that, um, what I've done is I've put jack stands under the fronts of the rear frame rails right here where they weld to the floor pin underneath there, and then the front jack stands are on the, the forward slope frame, and then I've got supporting jack stands on the rockers just in case it still wants to sag or, or do anything. And a lot of that's also so that I can like it's it's been on stands for a while. And, um, and I've put those under there so I can tell if it's moving because like, you know, if it's resting on two and like lifting off of one that met it earlier, that's not good. That's, that's, a, that's a sign that the thing's shifting. Um, but, uh, and another thing is there, there's, there's a bunch of stuff under here that you want to be careful of when you're cutting your, your pans out. You have your transmission cross number, which we already talked about and, um, and how this guy was about to hack through it. Um, you've got your forward frame rail which goes up through there. You can see it better on that side where, where it's been welded because um, the pan is actually welded to the section of it that rides on the pan and then it drops down and then you have that plate that comes up and meets it that we've welded at the top. And uh, also you have your seat supports, your outer seat supports, which are here and here. 
and you do not want to cut those um, unless they're so awful that you're replacing those two. And those are just spot welded in underneath the floor pan, which you'll see once we get this peeled out. Um, if you're if you're putting your seats back and you're, you're like if you say you have factory seats, obviously you want to mark what holes were used on the the supports to to mount them. Um, this car, the, this this car was just a, a, a hodgepodge mess. The seats aren't even from it, um, so we're gonna we're gonna figure something else out with seat mounting. So we're not too concerned about that. But if you're doing like a proper restoration and you want your car to be right, you want to put your seats back in it. You definitely want to mark where your seats were here, um, where they were here. 68 B bodies. Um, I think I'm not sure if they were all bench seat cars. I think the console cars had buckets. Uh, buckets weren't really common until 69. If you had a bucket seat car, you should have plates under here. To my understanding, this car just had buckets tossed in it and doesn't actually have seat mounting plates. They're just drilled through the floor. That's a little dangerous. Um, but as you can see, the new pan has plates welded in in the middle for bucket seats. Um, so we're going to use those. Um, old pans do not. This was originally a bench seat car. I think most of the 68 Roadrunners were. So, um, what we're going to look for is this line of spot welds right here, second one back. Um, and that cross member should, realistically, it'll start about there. So we're going to mark here, just rough, and this is just rough. We're, we're just trying to get metal out of the way so we can actually see without crawling under the car where everything is. And again, we're going to mark low. We're going to recut all of this. We're going to cut it higher once we have enough metal out to see where the new floor pan sets in it. So for right now, we are just making cuts to get stuff out of the way. I mean, if you're if you're real real confident in your ability to measure this out and not hack through anything and not hack too much out, you can you can do a lot less cuts than we're going to do. But we're I'm I'm just going to chip away at this slowly. Make sure I don't mess anything up underneath it. So we're just taking this section out right here for right now. Just to be able to get in there and again see from the top side where everything is under it. And be able to actually get a chisel or a screwdriver up in there and start popping these spot welds. So instead of just cutting everything out, we can peel some of the sections out and just break the spot welds by hand. So that, the seat support starts right here, roughly. And this one up here starts before it rises, so it's about there. So this is what we're gonna cut just to get into it and see where everything is.
So, um, had a little bit of issues, or a couple of issues doing this the way we're doing. Uh, just popped. This, this side had three spot welds. Um, seems like they're kind of inconsistent with where stuff is from the factory because I know the ones on that side had a few more and they were like staggered. This one just had three in one. Uh, but just popped all of those welds, kind of worked to, to snap it there. Um, then we're going to do another relief cut right there along, like kind of behind because if you can see, can you see where the, the fender is? Here is your, your transmission crossman retortion bar. Um, there's your actual like, transmission, uh, whatever you call it. What do you call it? What do you call it? Transmission belt? Yeah, yeah, we'll go with it. Um, one thing to keep in mind, you got lines on both sides of this. On the passenger side, you're going to have a fuel line that runs right down here exactly where this brake line runs. And this is the, the main line for your rear brakes. Um, there's also a parking brake cable that we have detached that would have run down under here. And um, AMD pans normally have the uh, the parking brake uh, like a little bracket already welded in. Um, and if they don't, you need to mark where that is and make sure you know where to put it back because uh, there is like a little thing that runs through. Um, so now we're going to make a cut right here over top of where that line is, being real careful not to hit the line so that this is free to wiggle a little bit, pop these welds, pop those welds, and then we'll start popping the welds along the cross member and then at some point we need to get a good Dremel so I can just uh, kind of notch that very gently so we can get that out because I don't want to cut Right. Aggressively into the the cross member, yeah. So we'll just notch that once those are popped and free. Pull that out, and then this stuff should just crumble as we keep popping the welds along that cross member. Um, cool beans. 